in order to understand how the Constitution came about, you have to understand the events that came before it. Here I have a very, very simple timeline of the founding era in American history. As you can see, it all starts uh, roughly 1775, when the first outbreak of the Revolutionary War first started. 1776, we officially declare our independence from the British Empire. 1781, independence is formally won, and the first governing document under which the United States operates, the Articles of Confederation, is established in 1781. Well, due to a plethora of problems that were caused by the Articles of Confederation, the Constitutional Convention was called in 1787, and the current document under which we operate, in its original form, was produced. In 1791, the first 10 amendments of the Constitution were written and ratified. Now, what I'm going to do now is to explain the precursor to the U.S. Constitution, the Articles of Confederation, what it did, uh, where it failed, and ultimately how the U.S. Constitution was ultimately a response to the problems that were incurred during the Articles of Confederation. And it's here where I will further my argument made in the introduction of this class that, that uh, federalism and the state national relationship is the driving force in American governance. So the Articles of Confederation was technically the United States' first constitution in the sense that it was the governing document under which the American citizenry and the government operated. So it was a coordinating device. However, just because something is a coordinating device doesn't make it may mean that it's a good one. Uh, in this document, there was a Congress of sorts. Each state had one vote at the national level. It operated very much like the U.S. Senate in the sense that each state was equally represented, but equally represented with one vote, regardless of population size. There was also a unanimity rule. The Congress at the, at the national level, under the Articles of Confederation, could not pass anything unless all the states were in favor of it. Now, only the state delegates could actually participate in the national, uh, this national Congress, if you can call it that. And even this Congress, its role was only advisory. It could pass laws, so to speak, but it was at the state's discretion whether or not they would follow those laws. True power under the Articles of Confederation was entirely at the state level with the state legislatures. The role of the National Congress was solely advisory, very weak, and it did not have what we would conceptualize as a judiciary or an executive. There was technically a president. However, his role was largely ceremonial and he had only one year uh, in his term and it was on a rotational scheme. Uh, legislation was handled on the floor. There were very few rules as to how debate on legislation was handled. Uh, there were no limits uh, on time nor on the germaneness of the legislation. So you could get on the floor to debate a piece of legislation and recite French poetry for all they cared. It didn't, anything you had to say on the floor did not have to have anything to do with a piece of legislation. They could just kill time in an attempt to kill the legislation if they wanted to. And because of that, oftentimes the same issues would be revisited multiple times. And, as if that weren't bad enough, 
Most of the time, the state delegates wouldn't even bother to show up. There was no quorum and no quorum rules to be had. Additionally, there were no taxes. Consequently, there was no mechanism by which the national government could raise revenue. They could request funds from the states, but it was up to the states whether or not they would actually fulfill those requests.